Um, so what we're going to cover is studying landscape architecture at UCT, just to give you a sense of the nature of postgraduate study in landscape architecture. Uh, and then we'll look at the admission requirements. And then very importantly, once you've graduated, it's a professional degree. So you do register with a professional organization, just like SACAP in terms of architects or EXA in terms of the engineers, exactly the same process happens in landscape architecture through SACLAP, the South African Council for the Landscape Architecture Profession. So we'll talk about that uh, briefly and the different uh, options because it's not just one way through and everybody follows the same option you can actually take different routes through in terms of when you graduate and going to work coming back or going straight through that sort of thing um, and then we'll talk about the application selection process and have some uh, q a <clears throat> okay so this uh, this slide is particularly set up to just show you the typical situation in our uh, studios because the main course is still designed just like you would in architecture for instance so the main course and the main um, uh, occupation of your time is designed you pin up your design projects exactly like you would in undergrad as well we have thankfully much smaller classes so you don't have so many people that you are in class with so it's slightly less rushed uh, and on the left hand side, you see an exam process with external examiners. We had somebody from the USA, uh, from Harvard, actually critting last year at the exams. And Finzi Saidi on the right is from University of Joburg. And um, uh, then we have uh, students. Um, the bottom right is Jan, who's an architecture BAS student, who's now working in um, Hall at an architecture firm. So he's an example of somebody who came to BAS, just this one, eh? <laughs> there we go. Um, <clears throat> and this is an example of, again, the typical studio environment. Um, top right-hand side on the left is a lady who, Tana Klitzner, who's a practicing landscape architect. So that's one thing I didn't mention in the beginning is that besides Christine and I, there's a whole string of professional landscape architects, as well as specialists who work with us. And uh, they obviously can't be here at the moment because they're practicing landscape architecture at the moment, but you are taught, which is a little different to perhaps an architecture undergrad, you're taught by a wide range of practitioners and specialists involved in freshwater ecology, geology, soil science, um, ecology, whole range of specialists that we work with because landscape architecture is a like a home where a lot of different disciplines come together and so we interface quite a lot with other disciplines so that's an that's an important difference um we do quite a lot of field work and field trips which is of course a little bit easier when you've got smaller classes our classes are usually 15 or 20 in size and um yeah, it's just an example of various field trips, looking at plans of places, going to places to study ecosystems or study study um, plants, uh, and to look just at how the landscape is utilized in different ways. One of the important things is we collaborate. So who, if you are in this program at UCT, who do you collaborate with? So in your studios, you work, we don't only work with the landscape architects, we work with two groups, the urban designers and the city and regional planners. So here we're working with the city and regional planners, which is very important profession to interface with when you're really trying to make a difference in terms of planning the landscape, because the planners have a big role to play in the same process, but they're not a design discipline. So there's a very important interface there. And so he has just collaborative studios where we're working together with the planners. And um, this is an example of our bridging course. So if any of you are not from a design undergrad, but a related undergrad like um, environmental science, then you need to do the bridging course. And this is an example of the bridging course. We'll get into detail how that works later. Some photos from our bridging course in 
2021, which is a very intense crash course studio um, <clears throat> program. So this is uh, just a slide which shows how we fit into the School of Architecture, Planning and Geomatics here. So on the left is the landscape architecture degrees, uh, Bachelor of Landscape Architecture in the tan color and then lands master of landscape architecture each one year exactly the same as the other programs here in terms of city and regional planning is the same architecture is the same one year honors one year masters uh, the urban design in the in between here that one is important to note because you can actually have you have the option to enter there from landscape architecture if you decide not to go on into landscape architecture masters so you can, but you see there's no undergrad in urban design, so you can actually use the Bachelor of Landscape Architecture as a bridge into urban design. Um, nevertheless, that's how it sits in the school. Um, these are the ways that you can enter the, the degree. So if you have a BAS from UCT or any equivalent architecture school, uh, any degree that's equivalent to a Bachelor of Architecture Studies, undergrad, or if you have an undergrad in landscape architecture, you can enter straight into the um, BLA. You don't need to go through the bridging course. You also do not, importantly for the BAS students, you do not need a year out. So of course, if you take a year out, that's absolutely fine, but you don't need to do um, a year out. Uh, you can come straight in if you want to. Um, then you, uh, whoops, then you study the Bachelor of Landscape Architecture. Then to the left, you see registration. So just as it works in architecture, you can register on a lower uh, category than a professional architect or landscape architect. You register as a professional senior landscape architect or technologist, and you can go and work with that honors degree, just like you could if you wanted to do in architecture as well, then you can take a break. And then you can, if you want to go and work, and then you can come back and study the masters at the later stage, or you can, of course, go straight on. But it's important, which is the same for architecture, you need the master of landscape architecture to become a full professional landscape architect. And it's the same as architecture, you can't uh, sign off on plans as a professional architect without your masters and your registration it's the same in landscape architecture so maybe that i just need to mention is that the south african council for the landscape architecture profession um, uh, administers the professional landscape architectural world and the registration categories exactly like SACAP does it's on the same level it's legislated legally with the same binding legal processes that professional licensing in architecture works. So it's an important question like that because a lot of people think that landscape architecture is not really a profession like engineering, architecture, etc. It is legislated on exactly the same level in exactly the same way as uh, so it's a profession you enter. Um, this is for the students who do not have a undergrad in, in, in design, so from environmental science, from sociology, we also have artists coming in as well from undergrad in art, because they don't have a spatial uh, design background, they need to do our bridging courses first in order to get into the landscape architecture uh, or part of getting into the landscape architecture program, and those have taken on a new format now, so the bridging courses now, so it's very important for those who are not from a design undergrad to take note that uh, when you enter, you will now apply for two different degrees. So, and please email us if you're confused by that, because it's just two options of the same degree. It's the Bachelor of Landscape Architecture when you apply, and then there's the bridging stream, Bachelor of Landscape Architecture bridging stream. That one includes an additional course, which consists of a cluster of four smaller courses. That detail, don't worry about too much now, but there's an additional course called the bridging course included in that degree. So you take an extra course and you register for the bridging stream. So that's how the bridging courses work. But please email us if you're confused about that. 
And this is how the bridging forces sit in a typical year. So you'd run two at the top there, those two brochures there are the two of the bridging courses because they actually run as CPDs for people outside the university as well. So those courses you run in late January, essentially just before you start in February in the main course. And then in July, you, you do the other two bridging courses. So again, maybe at the end, if people want a little more detail about that, I can, we can chat about that. Um, so this is what you'll see when you apply now to landscape architecture, and very importantly for the BAS students, don't apply for the right-hand one, Bachelor of Landscape Architecture Bridging Stream, you must apply for the straight landscape, Bachelor of Landscape Architecture, and you'll see there's one less course there with slightly less credits, and the one with the bridging stream is slightly more credits. Uh, so if you have any confusion about that, which one you are eligible to apply for, please email us before you apply because it's complicated to untangle the degree if you've applied for the wrong degree. It takes quite a bit of time. So it's better to get the, the right degree from the beginning. Um, and then of course, if there's somebody who comes from an unrelated degree, you can't come into landscape architecture. I'm not sure there's anybody here who's from that, somebody who's trying to get into landscape architecture, but the one way to do that is first to go into the Bachelor of City Planning, because that will allow you to then apply into the Bachelor of Landscape Architecture if you have that as a almost like a bridging degree. Um, yeah, so that's how the degrees work. I think, again, maybe the last point on this slide, just to emphasize, once you've studied the Landscape Architecture Honours, you have choices. And that increasingly we have more people exercising the Bachelor of Landscape Architecture for that purpose. So we have had three or four students from last year who did Bachelor of Landscape Architecture and then decided either right from the beginning or during their studies, they actually preferred urban design. So then they just switched to urban design after the honors. Um, we haven't had anybody go over to the M Phil in conservation, but you can do that. It's uh, also in the school. You can go there if you wanted to. And then if you want to, you can stay uh, on and do your master's in landscape architecture. So the powerful thing for BAS students, I think I have mentioned this, is that if you've studied the, the blue degree at the bottom, which is your Bachelor of Architectural Studies, if you go straight on, in two years, you can complete a Bachelor of Landscape Architecture and a Master of Urban Design, and you have three disciplinary categories to potentially enter into within two years when all your peers who went into architecture are still only finished their honors in architecture because they can't go straight on these are just things we're trying to get people to realize they don't realize that a lot of people and of course there's not everybody can go into the honors in architecture so just look at your options that are available if you don't perhaps go into architecture or if you don't want to go into, into architecture and realize that you have a choice of uh, a few directions in your career if you use the Bachelor of Landscape Architecture as like a knuckle to other places. So that's just, I think, a very good thing to empower yourself with some choice. Okay. Uh, these are our... Those are the, that's just the courses you can read in the handbook, which is the link to the handbook is, is it on the website? Uh, it might be there, I'm not sure, but, but there's information on these courses there as well you'll find. So I don't want to go into these in detail, it's just to show you what you can expect. The left-hand side is the honors, the green, and the right-hand side, the blue is the masters. The semester one, there's quite a lot of courses there which you run, and they mostly revolve around the categories on the left-hand side. So design is the major course. That's where you spend most of your time. Uh, then ecology is, of course, very important. And what's very exciting to me always is we don't engage with ecology as a place to gather information about the environment to design with but in fact the ecological way of seeing the world is becoming an increasingly interesting design opportunity which is very exciting so it's 
um, I don't know if there's any BAS3s here, but the way you're engaging with ecology and landscape in your design project is what we're doing in landscape architecture is engaging with ecology as a design opportunity, not as a place to get information about the landscape only. Nevertheless, construction is important. You have to be able to build the things you make. So um, you build the things you design. So that's important. And of course, history and theory, and we, we do uh, a course in plants and design as well. The right-hand side, the masters, is slightly fewer courses because in the second semester, you dedicate most of your time to, well, all of your time in second semester to the thesis, your thesis project, which happens in second semester. Okay, just very briefly, we don't have any landscape architects talking today from practice. We had that in the, in the previous one. So if you want to hear from some practitioners, look at the previous recording. This just shows you, because a lot of people ask, but where do landscape architects work? So these are just images of graduates from our programs who are working in different places, like in the top left for government, public works, uh, or province or municipalities like the city of Cape Town. The bottom left two, two graduates are working for private practice. The lady in the middle at the top is working for Luedebeek Baljon in the Netherlands. So is the gentleman just below her on the right. This lady is working for architects. There's quite a lot of landscape architects increasingly working for architects because of the interface there. So there are quite a few of our graduates working for architects as well. <clears throat> um, botanical garden, we've had people working there too. Top right is Amy, who happens to be one of our part-timers, who started her own firm called Yes and Landscape Architects, plus another graduate that started their own firm. So the message is, where do you work? Well, you work in all the kinds of places where landscape architecture could be practiced private practice, the city, and various other places, or if you're feeling brave, start your own firm. Um, these are links that are put up here to those companies' websites, which, and these companies' websites just happen to have a lot of examples of their work. So if you want to see what landscape architects typically do, what do they do? And even if you think you know what landscape architects do, I would strongly encourage you to go and have a look because most of the time people come back and say, oh my goodness, I didn't know that's actually what landscape architects do. So even if you think you know, go and have a look, you might be surprised at the kinds of projects landscape architects work on. These overseas, there's so many of our graduates working overseas. So the question of, can you go work overseas? Yes, you can. You cannot go and register immediately and practice professionally exactly the same as architecture. You can't take your SACAP registration and become a professional architect in, in the UK. You can't do that. It's the same with landscape architecture, but you can enter practices and work. In other words, our degree is acknowledged as a legitimate uh, degree in landscape architecture. We have landscape architects from this program there in the Netherlands. There are a number in the UK. I just put ones which have good websites. And increasingly, if you're interested, Increasingly, these kinds of companies are large infrastructural companies that they do almost everything, but very much large infrastructural, green infrastructure, civil infrastructure, those projects. And we've got a number of excellent landscape architects. Unfortunately, they're not in South Africa, but they've gone there and they are working on incredibly complicated, large, big infrastructural projects in terms of the green infrastructure side of things. So if you're interested in that, you can also go and do that. And there's a number of students that have, that have gone to study further. So our, our degree gives you entry, entry into these kinds of degrees. Some people have studied in at the Bartlett further. Uh, somebody who was teaching history with us earlier this year is studied in France, a master's in urban planning. Anyway, a graduate from Pretoria is studying, we know currently in um, Singapore. So there's, there's definitely wide range of opportunities. Sorry, I'm just going through it all and we can stop for questions. We're nearly finished. Oh, just put in here towards the end, uh, 
And just interrupt me if you have an urgent question, somebody online, but we will stop for questions. I'm nearly finished. Um, <clears throat> what I decided to include was a few examples of our students' projects. Again, just to really, because I've realized so many people think they know what landscape architects and they're not sure what they do. This is a student who entered a competition in Nairobi for part of the Nairobi River and how the whole urban fabric, the urban component interfaces with the river and the way public spaces interface with the river. This is just a master plan. Uh, and so the design of that whole river environment and the working with the freshwater ecologists to understand the opportunities of design in freshwater eco ecological systems is amazing. And that's a very involved component and something we put a lot of work on because water is a major issue. And so that's something they would do in this project and then engage with the harder urban interface at the top. So that's a one example of this project the student did. This is a very different project. Uh, this was Soldana Bay, one of the art students who came into our program. You can see very visually attuned. Hayden was is his name. And worked with uh, a star project started with the ballast water in ships. So and, and and that that water pollutes the bay, and that has implications on the ecological system, which has implications on the social systems and economic systems, and how the whole bay and its surrounding landscape can be designed to minimize the ecological impact of that, to maximize through those processes economic justice, social justice, environmental justice for the communities that live there. Very complex project. So this is an example of one of those bigger infrastructural ecological systems, ecological infrastructure type of project, um, but with an artistic approach. So it's one thing we tr really try to emphasize is how the worlds of uh, a civil engineer, freshwater ecologist, but then a sociologist, artists, those worlds come together is something that we try to emphasize. This is an example of a thesis project by Evo and very complex project, but uh, just came down to dealing with two species ultimately of invasive trees in the uh, sort of in um, around Franschhoek, all the mountains there have a big problem with these invasive species. And he decided to tackle those species and understand this, the entire system, the ecosystem of that, but lift it out into an entire socio-ecological system and start to work with what do we do with all those invasive species, but how do we manage them, not as a ecological entity in themselves, but as an entire socio-ecological network and the effects it can have into empowering communities, et cetera. Very complex and very visually engaging with ecological process, which was very exciting. Okay, so let's just look in a little more detail to the uh, application process and selection requirements. I think um, last comment I wanted to make quickly while Christine was talking about uh, replying to all the different potential undergrads, that's one thing that I think is very different for the architects is that uh, you suddenly find yourself in a design studio with other disciplines, which is great. So I think if you're especially interested in interdisciplinary thinking and sharing from other people who have a different experience to your undergrad, then uh, that's one thing which is get need to get used to in landscape architecture, but it's actually an advantage to you in a more interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary world. Okay, so, um, so our criteria, our selection criteria, if you're thinking about applying, um, it's literally the minimum requirements. So you need either a BAS from UCT or an equivalent three-year architecture bachelor's uh, degree or a landscape architecture undergrad. And like we've spoken, non-design, uh, undergrads, as long as it's NQF7, you would need to do the bridging stream. 
Um, so that we've that we've covered. So just take note of that when you apply, make sure you select the correct uh, the correct degree, either the main degree or the bridging stream if you have a non design undergrad and check with us if you're not sure. Then the selection criteria. We prefer a minimum of 65 as an average across your courses. It's not a minimum requirement, it's a preferred minimum. So if you do have lower than 65 as an average, but your design and your construction, for instance, we'd like to emphasize those. If those are okay, they're quite strong, then we're okay if it's a bit lower. But if, you, if you're drifting much lower than 65, then it becomes potentially a problem. But again, the design and the construction are very important for us in terms of those coming from an undergrad in design. Uh, then, of course, your portfolio of design and creative work. And for those of you putting that together, um, uh, we're not looking for quantity, but we're looking for variety. And of course, we're looking for quality. But we're not looking for, you don't have to send us hundreds of pages of work please don't rather send us fewer, but variety. So we want hand-drawn, computer-drawn, final presentation, rough drawings, photographs. You've taken variety of, of creative work, but please include CAD and um, digital work as well. Um, yeah, and then academic writing or literacy, there's a requirement, I think, for a paper. A motivation letter, yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, just write a motivation letter and they think about it carefully and just discuss why you want to come into landscape architecture. Um, uh, yes. Maybe we can have a look at that on that introduction. Okay, so very importantly, uh, we go, that's what Christine is referring to now. There's on the website, please go to where this arrow says application information and process. There's a document there, which we'll pull up now also to show you. Please follow the steps there carefully um, and just follow carefully what that says because the application process at UCT is quite long and complicated. And my advice to anybody is bef before we maybe I just have a look at a few of those points there is to get your application in er as early as possible and, and, and like now, because we are open for applications, we are receiving applications, we're ready selecting and going through the application. So put your application in now. Then you'll say, but I haven't graduated yet. How that works, especially for the BAS students is um, you can complete your application, you submit a portfolio of your work to date, so you don't have your final work, we understand, submit your portfolio to date, and your uh, latest university results there at the top, um, you've got a results sheet or template that you can send us at the moment, so based on that, plus of course your CV and 750 word letter of motivation, Based on that, we can, if you go through the online process and you complete it, we can actually make you what we call a conditional offer. So, um, and that's for anybody with an undergrad who they're still waiting to finish in November, December and get their results. You can go through the process. Uh, we then, if we're happy with what we see so far, we can make you what we call a conditional offer. That means that your results and where we assume you'll end passing your degree, we would be happy to offer you a place. But of course, we want confirmation of that. And when you, when that is obtained from UCT, if you're doing BAS here, that process we facilitate on the inside. In other words, once you graduate from BAS here, your conditional offer is automatically changed to a full offer then you can accept or reject the offer, you see. But please do not wait. This is my strong advice. 
until November, December, when you actually get your confirmation and then only start the application process, it's way too late. It actually is past our deadline in any case. Before we open, oh, just take note of the deadlines. The uh, local applicants is 30 November, but I want to advise you that to put in your application during November, it's really gets so stuck in the system with all the other applications and just toing and froing and trying to get things sorted is if you are considering it, get your application in now. You can always reject it when an offer is made if you don't want to take it up. Okay, so, um, and you don't need to wait for your final results. So 30 November is very late. It's, it's very late. Um, and if anybody, I don't think there's anybody here who's an international applicant, but much, much more important, even more important to get your application in earlier. Um, otherwise, thank you very much for joining us. And um, please email us if you have any further questions or there's any clarification needed. But uh, the most important message, I think, in terms of application is get your application in as early as possible. Don't wait for the deadline, 30 November, it's too late. Get your application in now. We can already make you a conditional offer if you still need to graduate. So thanks very much. And yeah, email us if you have any further questions. Thank you very much, everybody.